quotient property of logarithm says um, let x be x and y be positive real numbers where the log base is not 1, then so that we have a fraction or a quotient. x is getting divided by y, and if we have that as a single logarithm, we can separate this. We can separate this as first log base b of the numerator minus log base b of the denominator. So instead of with letters, let me go ahead and write this down with my natural log example. You may have something like natural log of x over 2. What the quotient property is saying is we can separate this as natural log of x minus natural log of 2. Um, or if you have natural, not natural log, how about I give you something else. If you have log... 7, oh no, you know what, let me change it to something else. 21 minus log 3, then we can rewrite this as a single log. Log 21 over 3, which we can simplify as log, nah, uh, where, where, where did I get 27 from? I'm sorry about that. 21 over 3. So 21 divided by 3 will give us 7. So, um, of course, just like the previous example, this previous property, you will be asked to do both ways. Um, either condensing a separate logs into a single log expression or separating a single logarithm into separate, as many as you can. So that part is going to be called expanding. So let's take a look at some examples, okay? So... I write the expression as a single logarithm. So we have two separate logs. The good news is they're both natural logs. So I'll put them together, okay? I'll put them together in a single natural log. So I write down ln. And what I notice is that they have a minus sign in between. So what I will do is I'll do 12x squared over 4x. I'll put them together. So that will be 12x squared over 4x. If it was plus in the middle, I would have multiplied these two green highlighted terms. But they're not plus in the middle. It was a minus in the middle. So I'm going to write this as a fraction. 12x squared goes on top. 4x goes in the bottom. And we can simplify this. This is the same thing as natural log of 12 divided by 4 is 3. And x squared divided by x is just, just x. So, we were able to write this expression as a single logarithm. Yay! So, what we just used, this is called the quotient property of logarithm. Let's do another try me example or try example. All right, hold on. Let's take a look. Over here. Ooh, we have three terms. Now, whenever you have a minus, guys, and this is how I do these problems. Whenever you have a minus in front of a log, that will go to the bottom of the fraction. Okay, that will go to the bottom of the fraction. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put this as a single log. Um, do they all have a common log base? This is a common log. This is a common log. This is a common log. All of their bases are 10, right? So what I need to do is I will just put them all together. Um, if I just highlight their base uh, arguments, it's 6x, y, and 3z. Okay, but you know what? I like to put this 3z in a different color. Why? You see how the last term, the log 3z, has a minus sign in front? So I'm going to make sure to put that 3z in the bottom of the fraction. So here we go. This is equal to common log of a fraction. Okay. On top of the fraction, I'll put the 6x and y. Those two go on top because they are positive terms. 6x y goes on top but because the 3z had a negative in front of this log 3z that one goes to the bottom 3z i thought i was done but i can see that we can simplify this 6 divided by 3 so at least let's go ahead and simplify that much i think that's all we can do log um, i will have 2xy and the bottom of the fraction will just be z because 6 divided by 3 gives us 2, okay? And that is it for this example.
Well, that's kind of short. So how about I keep on going? Let me give you one more property called the power property of logarithms. And it goes like this. Okay, I'll make up my own example. If you have log of 5 squared, you can rewrite this as this. You can bring down that square in front of this log expression and write this as 2 times log 5. Okay, that's what you can do. That's what the power property is saying. So if you have natural log of x to the fifth power, that exponent of 5, we can bring it down to the front and say this is the same thing as 5 times natural log of x. So if you have another way, or like how about we have something like this. If you have 3 um, log 4, we can bring that 3 back if they ask us to do it the other way around. So if that 3 goes up as the exponent of the 4, what we will have is log, log is, this is just common log, log of 4 to the 3rd power. So we can say this is the same thing as log, all right, I better make all of these a little bit smaller so that I can write one more line. That is the same thing as log 60. Four. So, uh, let's read this power property of logarithm. Let b and x be positive real numbers where this log base b is not equal to 1, and p is any real number, any exponent. Then, that p, that exponent of p, what we can do is we can bring this down in front of the log expression, ta -da -da, like right here. So, let's use this property a little bit. Let's use this property. It says try. Write the expression as a single logarithm. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, um, it's a little bit difficult, but we can do this. I'm going to go ahead and bring all these numbers that are in front. There's a 5 in front of it, right? I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this 5 as an exponent of 3. Okay? And there is this 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and bring this as an exponent of this y minus 1. And lastly, this positive 2, which is in front of the log expression. So anytime you have these numbers in front of these logs, we can just send it as their power. So I'll go ahead and do that line first, OK? So first of all, I will have, you want to sit down? Oh, you can sit down. We're going to have log base 3 x to the fifth power, okay, minus log base 3, y minus 1 to the 1 half power. Do you see how the numbers that were, the coefficients that were in front of these log terms, I should have probably called them, the numbers that were in front of the um, log terms are becoming exponents, right? Let's do the very last term plus log base 3 w r of w raised to the second power so first thing we did was we used the power property of logarithm to send all these numbers in front of these logs as exponents now let's see um i see a plus sign and i see a minus sign remember like i said Anything that has a minus sign will go to the bottom of the fraction, right? Um, looking at how all of them are log base 3, I'm going to go ahead and condense this into a single logarithm, log base 3, and I will draw a big fraction. Um, anything that has a positive number, so I'll go ahead and circle these, x to the fifth will go to the top, w squared will go to the top, but unfortunately, this y minus 1 to the 1 half power will go to the bottom because of that minus sign. You see the other terms were just positive. So um, on top of the fraction, I'll have x to the fifth and w squared. But y minus 1 to the 1 half power had a minus in front of it, so I will just send it to the bottom. Okay. So that is it. There's nothing else we can simplify. But hey, you may be able to ju just put that something getting raised to the half power as a square root. So just some additional rewriting that isn't really necessary, but if you want to write 
the bottom of the fraction as square root of y minus 1 instead of y minus 1 getting raised to the half power, they are the same thing. They are the same thing. So I think later on we will see some examples where um, things will come in as a radical, like a square root or cube root. In those cases, we should know how to rewrite them in exponential form instead of radical form so that we can use this power rule more, okay? So that is it for this example. I think I may have one more on the side. Let's do this one. Oh, look at this. I guess we can do two different things here. We Well, I'll go ahead and do it this way. I saw a 3 is in front of this parenthesis. So that means 3 is not only multiplying this to this first log term, but it's also multiplying to the second log term. So how about I distribute the 3? Okay, because it's multiplying to both of them. I will distribute this 3 to these two. So if I do that, I'll go ahead and write it down first. I will have 3 times log base 4 of x minus, now look carefully, I have to do 3 times 2 now, and that will give me 6 times log base 4 of the y, and then I'll just write down plus 2 times log base 4 of w. Next thing you're going to do is apply the power rule. Do you have any numbers that are in front of the fraction? I'm sorry, not a fraction. Why am I saying fraction? That's silly. Uh, in front of these log terms, 3, 6, and 2, right? I'm going to just send all those as the exponent of their argument, okay? So look and see what I'm doing here. The first term is now log base 4 of x to the what power? x to the third power, right? Keep going. Minus log base 4 of y to the 6th power, last term, plus log base 4 of w squared. So now we're ready to put these together in a single log. They're all log base 4, so I'm going to just go in and combine it as a single log base 4. Because the middle one has a minus, I know that one is going to be in the bottom. So I'll put the x cubed and w squared on top of the fraction, but I'll make sure to put this y to the 6th power in the bottom because this term had a minus sign in front of it. So here is my final answer. Log base 4 of x cubed times w squared getting divided by y to the 6th power. And that is how we can put an expanded or a long log expression into a single logarithm. I can show you a whole bunch of more examples, a couple more properties, putting all these things together. I have maybe two more pages of examples to show you. Uh, but in the first three videos, you guys saw the change of base formula, product property, quotient property, and the power property. You see, you saw the basic properties, all of them. So um, the next couple examples will be more of applications, but that is it for the properties, okay?